after the way he's treated me. The most beastly thing I ever heard of, and I won't stand for it. The judge told him to pay, and I won't take a cent left. After all, he's off the A half a loaf. Well, he can keep it, and the cheese that goes with it. I'm used to luxury. He can blame himself for that. The half he's offered you is still a tidy monthly sum. I won't stand for it, do you hear? I won't stand for it. I'll send him to jail first. Sending him to jail, Sandra, is not going to help matters any. He still has money, you know. And in the alimony jail, he could buy all the bodily comforts he needs. That may be, Eddie. But he'll be in jail just the same. And that'll cramp his style. All right. Remember, it's your idea, not mine. Sheriff's office. Well, this looks like my last day of freedom, Dorothy. There you are. It's a terrible law, Mr. Hamilton. It was made for women. You shouldn't complain. How about that private little plan of ours? Is it ready to launch? Yes, sir. You're to sell at present market prices, and I'm to secretly buy when the stock hits a new low. Exactly. Follow it out to the letter, Dorothy, while I'm sitting tight in the alimony jail. I'm sure the former Mrs. Hamilton will listen to reason when your favorite stock hits bottom. That's the purpose. You rang, sir? Rang? The, uh, the pantry indicator registered the tinkle, sir. No, I didn't ring. Must have been a mouse nibbling on the wire. I'll set a trap for it. The drugs. You might bring me a highball. Make it strong. Maybe my last. Highball, strong and lasting. Yes, sir. The stock will rise, of course. Yes, of course it will. I have entire control of the company, you know. The success of my scheme depends upon you. You can rely on me. It hasn't taken me four years to find that out. You know, you're not like a woman at all, Dorothy. I mean, you're, well, you're dependable, reliable, like a man. No feminine nonsense. You understand business very well, Mr. Hamilton. You bet I do. When the proper time comes, jumbo mines will reach 80, perhaps 90. What's the matter with you, Grog? <laughs> I, uh, I'm afraid I have the upsy-dupsies today, sir. Nervous about my trouble, huh? There you are, sir. Mr. Hamilton, might, uh, might I ask you a favor? What's on your mind, Grubbs? Well, uh, since you are, uh, uh, since you might leave rather unexpectedly, may I have uh, my check today instead of the end of the week? Uh, it might save me. Yes, I certainly, Grubbs. Take care of that, Dorothy. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. Thank you, Miss. Well, what's the hurry about your check? Alimony, sir. You? <laughs> Following in your master's footsteps, sir, Grogs. <laughs> well, I, I tried not to mention it, sir. Well, you've kept out of jail at any rate. Only by the skin of my molars, if I might say so. <laughs> Grogs, what is your frank opinion of alimony? It's like paying for a dead horse, sir. <laughs> Jumbo platinum, jumbo platinum mine, jumbo platinum, jumbo platinum 80, 80, 90, jumbo platinum, Hudson, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3. Theo. Hello. So it's you with it. I don't want any excuses. All I want from you is one word. Did you get it? Uh, yes, Ducky, yes, I've got it. That is, I'm, I'm getting it, Ducky. Oh, don't Ducky me. I'm not a duck. I can't live on worms. I need money. I can't talk now. I'm in the bath. Oh, are you all wet, Ducky? <laughs> well, then you go on and play with your uh, boats and things, and don't you worry any longer, because I've got a scheme that'll make me thousands, and then you'll get your pound of flesh. Oh, what would I do with a pound of flesh? I told you. Any time you want to get rid of me, 2,500 will do it. Ducky, how can you yodel at a time like this? Oh, Mr. Brooks. Hiya, Dugan. What's the purpose? The alimony clubs are special. They just elect the Chester Hamilton president. They ought to change their anthem to the battle cry of freedom. That's what the wives are singing. Here, yeah, try to imagine this is good. Say, Dugan. Anything on the book against me taking a peek at the new specimen? No, step right in. <laughs>
sad stories? Sure, spill it, boy. Tell me your side of it, and I'll give you a break and some swell publicity. How about it, George? Want to say a few well-chosen words? Yes, I would. It's all wrong. My wife and I were getting along fine together at first, until some other people started making trouble. Some girlfriends of hers married men that were making more money than I do, because I couldn't give her fur coats and cars, things that they had. They said I wasn't any good. It isn't fair when a fellow does everything he can and then gets thrown in jail by a woman instead of getting another chance. It isn't fair. Anybody else want to discuss the psychology of love? You yeah, answer, Mr. President. What? My wife has got herself a bad case of circulation here. And, and, and when I protest, she got me through it in here. And, and now I've got to pee her board and keep her boyfriend too. <laughs> Mr. President, Mr. President, I want to make a speech. All right, Tony, go ahead. My Rosa, my Rosa, my beautiful Rosa. We are very, very happy together. When someday along comes a blonde dame and she says to my beautiful Rosa, she says, look, how you like to have no more babies? How you like to make no more cook? How you like to wash the dishes? How you like to get the money every week, do nothing, and make the poop outside? My beautiful Rosa says, yes, fine. Then she sees her lawyer. And then, boom! And I am Tony Moretio, finds himself in this again, while his wife is outside making the hoop. What kind of a country this is? You know what I do with this blonde if I see her? I have a little bit of a like his Rosa? Not to me, but you can never tell. Your broker's on the phone, Mr. Hamilton. <laughs> oh. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'm camping right on your tail, pal. You're wasting your time trailing me. Oh, I don't find a little stroll. Better take it to sunlight. Not until I find out who and when. Now, don't go play on me. There's a wedding in the offing, and I want to know her name. It's a secret, I tell you. I'm holding out on everybody. I haven't even told my secretary the name of the girl I'm going to marry. Hello? Yeah. Just a minute. It's a little cramped here. Dubin, switch it to my private cell, will you? Hey, now, listen. Do I get an exclusive? You'll be best man when it happens. Oh, one thing more. Is she a blonde or a brunette? Hmm. Well, is she a white woman? Yes. Well, that's a good start, anyway. Take him down and throw him away. We can't have him staring down at us like that. After we're married. There goes that bell again.
believe it or not, I was just hanging the picture. Mr. Dugan and I are old friends. Yes, yes, uh, <coughs> evidently. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes, Laura and I, I mean Mrs. Gods and I, used to go to school together. Oh, it's been going on that long, has it? Surely, Uncle, you're not insinuating. No, I'm not insinuating at all. I'm just trying to speak plainly. Jealous, Uncle. No, no. Villious. Of course, while we're not married, dear, I do think you should try and keep up the standard. No hard feelings, I hope. No, no, no. Go as far as you like. Go as far as you like. Only I think you might have spared my picture. Oh, Dugan. I mean, Mr. Dugan. Brought his picture to the house to show it. They must have gotten mixed up on it. Yes, well, <laughs> of course, mistakes will happen. <clears throat> Good night. Just a minute. I want to see about that jumbo stock you told me about. Oh. So your stock has taken a nosedive. <laughs> well, it's just temporary, my belle, just temporary. Take it, see. Bulls and the bears are playing house again, but <clears throat> everything will be hunky-dory by sundown, sun, sun up, by break, by... Why don't you send that guy to my school for husband? I'm giving him until sundown. Jeez, 2,122 plus $4.33. Hello? Is that you, Rod? Did you see about Jumbo Mines in the last edition of the afternoon paper? Well, I, I wouldn't be too much alarmed about that because... Uh, after all, it's only gone down 15 points. 15 nothing. It's down 30, and the market's closed. Down 30, and the market's closed. Uh oh. Oh. What's the matter? Step on it. You've been two hours, you ain't half finished yet. Yes, sir. So you're the famous stock manipulator. Am I laughing? Ha, 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 ha. So you're the famous picture hanger, am I? Screaming. <laughs> Shut up and get busy. Well, I'm doing the best I can. I've never met a sponge before until I met you. Shut your face. If you don't, you might want to use it sometime. And there won't be none that's shut. See? Your best friends will never tell you. Uh. Hello, Mr. Hamilton. Hello, Dugan. Drugs. Yes, sir. I'm 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 doing. Why, well, Mr. Hamilton. Here we are together, sir. What are you doing here? For the same reason that you are here. I tried to communicate with you, sir, but uh, that man said it was against the rules or something. What man? The man who hangs the pictures for my wife. What? Uh, Mr. Dugan. Oh. But why? Who put you in here? Laura. Yes, Laura is my wife. You should have told me about this Laura before. Oh, sir, no words can describe Laura. Well, buck up, Gogs. I'll advance you the price of your freedom. Oh, thank you. But that's $2,500, sir. So why not? One of us in here is enough. After all, we're brothers under the skin, suffering from the same ailment, if not from the same woman. Oh, please, sir, I... 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 Nonsense. You'll be out of here in an hour, Gogs. Take a vacation. Go to the seashore. Someplace, any place. I shall need you for quite a while. A vacation? To the seashore? Oh, I've always wanted to go to the seashore, sir. The splashing of the surf. Mm. The smell of the fish. Mm, beautiful. Beautiful. But I, I haven't the proper clothes for that sort of thing, sir. Take a suit or two of mine, and good luck. Oh, thank you. I, uh, thank you, sir. All right, Rob. <laughs> thank you 2,500 times, sir. Here's to the ultimate, the one may she wear till the day her born and grown. What are you stalling for? Get down there and get to work. <laughs> I've resigned. I'm all through, Dookie, old boy. I'm all through. Yeah? Well, you haven't even started yet. <laughs> Mr. Hamilton has advanced me $2,500 to pay Lura off. $2,500 smacking? Uh-huh. 
What a vacation Laura and I will have. You're going on a vacation with my money? Sure. Me and your wife just like this. Which one is my wife? Yes, darling. He's been here and gone. That's great. Did he give you that 2500 berries his boss just gave him? 2500 No, all he gave me was one month's alimony. What? One month's alimony? Why, that double trust and... What? What's the matter, dear?
when she's arrested. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been interested in dark stuff. What is it, Lonnie? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's all pretty dark. <laughs> is it really true, Sir Oswald, that the animals in Africa grow to be so gigantic? <laughs> well, uh, uh, yes and no. No? My uncle says that... Yeah, well, in that case, yes. <laughs> uh, have any of you ever been to Africa? You've never been to Africa. You look, you're so hot. <laughs> you left it. I can speak with freedom. I've been told that the African safari is the most picturesque thing in the country. The safari? Oh, yes, particularly the female safari. <laughs> oh, my, you should see them during the mating season. How they skip around from crag to crag like a hardy shamrock, you know. Beautiful, very beautiful. <laughs> but I mean the safari, the African safari, the native caravan. Oh, the cap, oh, the safari, the caravan. <laughs> I thought you meant the safari, the safari, the safari is the African chipmunk, you know, so-called because it's so far from the nose to the chipmunk. My uncle tells me that in Africa the insects are far more to be feared than the greater animals. Your uncle is absolutely right. Well, I'm so sorry to make Sarah go. Don't be interrupted. No, 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 I'm, I'm glad you came, as a matter of fact. I, you sit down. Thank you. There you are. Sir Oswald has been telling us about the insect life in Africa. Do go on, Sir Oswald. I'm vitally interested in bugs. <laughs> Never will I forget the day I was attacked by a herd of beetles. A herd of beetles? Oh, yes, yes. The African beetles sometimes grow to be as large as turkeys. <laughs> well, there I was standing on the plains all alone, when suddenly I heard the bellowless cry of the beetle. <laughs> the beetle cry of the battle. There they were, 50 of them, galloping in my direction, their tails lashing furiously. Tails? Yes, yes, they were the last one, the tail one. <coughs> With red fiendish whiskers on, they came. I raised my swatter, my rifle, but not before I saw the whites of their eyes. And I fired, and 40 out of the 50 bit the dust. But there were 20 of them left, and what was I to do? I had no more bullets. The 10 bottles were up, the beetles were on me in an instant. It came to be a hand-to-hand -hand encounter. It was every beetle for itself. My bowie knife slashed the air to ribbons. on the ground, and I sneaked up to him. But he looked up at me with his cow like eyes, and I didn't have the heart to kill him. What did you do? I took him home and nursed him back to health. Until one day he died, and I had him stuffed. Where is he now? My man is using him for a back scratch.
Thank you, Dorothy. Small girl, Dorothy. Of course she is. What about it? Oh, I just didn't think you'd noticed. Well, that looks like your stock failure gag worked. It certainly did. Sandra's on half rations. <laughs> Say, listen, I was going to be best man. Now that you're free, when do you put on the chains again? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? As soon as that? Tomorrow, right here in this room. Everything quiet and simple. Oh, no, I hate quiet weddings. Why not have some paper caps and confetti? The bride wouldn't like that. What do you think of my judgment? Beautiful, isn't she? So sweet, innocent, untouched by life, like, like something out of a fairy story. You sure she's not something out of a snappy story? Hey, wait a minute. That's all right. I was only kidding. She looks like a cream puff wrapped in cellophane. <laughs> Look at that little pet. I'd like to wipe that smile off her face. What are you so excited about? What difference does it make? I didn't take that doll. I let him cut my alimony so that he could give her the difference. A society dame with a baby stare. Let's have a look. <laughs> she as funny as that? That baby stare looks very familiar to me. You know that dame? No, her. Why, she used to buck the explanation in the movie studio. Her name's Fanny Malone. Keep going, baby. I'm listening. Of course, darling. Yes, it should be quiet. Oh, I hate ostentation. And we run away if we can be alone and no one can find us. That's my idea exactly. Well, by the way, did you get the flowers I sent you? Yes, dear, and I love them. Roses especially. Oh, you think so? Well, there'll only be a few hours. Goodbye, sweet. Yes, ma'am? Tell your mistress the fuller brush woman is here. Uh -huh. I don't think we need any stuff. A woman from your man's past. Well, who are you? Sandra. I tell fortunes and everything. Well, of all the nerve coming up here on a nose. Yeah, I got that too. I had the man you're going to marry. Oh, I see. You'll be it. Right, the first time. Send your shadow here for a spot of gin. You're going to need it. I never drink. Keep it going. Yes. Cigarette? I never smoke. Before I get through with you, baby, you're going to burn. You kindly state your business and go. It's okay. Hamilton faked a Wall Street crash and cut my alimony in half. See? No, I don't see it. But he cut my alimony in half just the same. And now that he's in the money, it's up to you to get him to put it back where it was. Well, how dare you suggest such a thing? How dare you even to think that I should become a party to a sordid scheme? <laughs> Sit down, Fanny Malone. You know, the minute you came through that door, I said to myself, I said, Good. There's a girl who has I said to myself, I said, Philip, why don't you go by your right name, Ken? I like the name of Fanny better. So old, so old fashioned Fanny. You may be a great, big, lovely Phyllis to your boyfriend, but you're just plain old fashioned Fanny from alone to me. That's what my first husband used to say. Where did he get your file of the cream from that bird? Oh, about three months. You know, now that you brought the subject up, I'm, I'm terribly worried. You never got a thing to worry about. Just get tempted to put my alimony back where it was, and I won't say a word. Your alimony is the first thing I'm going to bring up after we marry. I you not be in that much of a rush. What, what was the grounds for your last divorce? Get it steady. What's wrong with walking in your sleep? Not a thing, nothing. You keep right on. 
on, Dorothy. Certainly have added a feminine touch to the decorations. I, I hope Miss Van Sant likes it. Of course she will. She'll like you, too. I'm sure you'll both be very happy. You bet we will. Wait till you see her, Dorothy. Then you'll understand how I've at last found the one woman for me. I'm glad you feel that way. Any girl could be happy with you. I... This ring I give thee in token and pledge of our constant faith and abiding love. By the authority vested me by the sovereign state, I now pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> Behind the horse. Oh, it can't be. It's a mistake. Funny thing about cameras, they 
never make mistakes. Oh, boy, here's everything but a fingerprint. No, and I've got better. I've got better than fingerprints. Wait, I'll show you. Oh, you won't think anything about this. You can't. Think of Mr. Hamilton. I am thinking. Anna, what about your honeymoon, Mrs. Hamilton? We were going to Riviera and then jaunt around the continent. Can I for half a second? Excuse me, dear. Excuse me, boys. Certainly. Yes, we're sailing tonight, and we're going to be gone for months. A girl only has a honeymoon once in her life. Well, maybe twice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but she wants it to last a long time. You got that, boy? Yes, I have. There you are, miss. You can see for yourself. Hand over those snapshots, Boggs. Oh, Mr. Hamilton, sir. I, uh, if I had only known, I wouldn't have done it. Wait a minute. There they are. When were these taken? Last week. Well, what about it? Oh, your faith in women is pathetic. Am I supposed to have hysterics because Phyllis was photographed with this idiot on the beach? <laughs> uh, we weren't on the beach all the time. What was that? I gave her all I had, sir, and she... What do you mean? What do you mean you gave her all you had? A diamond ring, $1,500. Her hotel bill, $700. For you, are you... Go ahead, sir. I wouldn't even feel it. Wait a minute. Rogers, have you got any proof of all this? Yes, sir, I have. Here you are. Here, here. here. Those are the... There's, those are the... Exhibit A. Exhibit B. Exhibit C. D, E, F, C, H, I... She tossed me aside like an old glove. Just a minute. Mr. Brooks, your paper. Thanks. Hello. Yeah, okay, sure. No, no, no. No, kill the I got a better one coming up. Wait a minute. Come here. Get an earful of this private flash from the coast. Repeat that. Her name is plain Fanny Malone. And she's been tossed around like a beach ball all over Southern California. There must be some mistake. Yes, and you made it. What am I going to do? All right, will you listen to me for the first time in your life? I listen to anything. Now listen. Rags, you're in on this, too. Oh, sir, I've been in so much. Now get a hold of this, the both of you. From now on, all you've got to do is follow water. Now get this. This is my Paris address. Wherever I am, this will reach me. Yes, sir. Hurry up, darling. I'm afraid we're going to be late. Don't worry, dear. We have plenty of time. Mr. Hamilton home? You can't see him now. He's leaving for you. Yeah, that's why we came. Are you Chester Hamilton? I am. I'm under arrest. What? We're from the Department of Justice. But what does this mean? We're taking him to Washington. Stop swindling. Federal investigation. I don't know what they're talking about. But this is our honeymoon. I don't have to wait. Yes, sir. I don't know what this means. I'm innocent. Come on, Hamilton. Why, this is ridiculous. Yes, you can't take him away like this. I'm sorry, old man. We'll wait for you downstairs. Yes, sir. I guess I'll have to go, dear. It'll be all right. Don't worry. I'll go down to headquarters. I'll be back in an hour or two. It'll be all right. Goodbye, dear. myself. 
You see how well I'm controlling myself? What are you doing here? I came to borrow a book. I own this apartment. I uh, lease it furnished to Mr. Hamilton. I am Mrs. Hamilton. You. Oh. Oh. Now I know why you tossed me aside. Now I know why you ran away and left me on the sand like a piece of kelp. Have you a pistol here? Or a long, sharp knife? No. Don't be alarmed. I simply want to kill myself. Oh. Ah, this will do. Oh, oh no, it's not. I can't stand it. I know you don't believe me, but it's true. My father literally dragged me from your side to marry his choice. Please believe me, Sir Oswald. When I married Mr. Hamilton, I left my heart behind. You poor child. Look, Thank you. I'm beginning to understand now. Your life was mapped out for you by an irate parent. It's true. I'm a very unhappy man. I'm going back to Africa, where the wild things understand me. Goodbye. Must you go? It's the only decent thing to do. I still have your ring. Yes, yes, I thought you did. Well, keep it. Keep the little pebble as a token of what might have been. Well, if you insist. And perhaps, who can tell, I may call again for another <coughs> book. Who was it, Miss Phyllis? Him? I'm going to put him on ice and save him for a rainy day. seem hard. It hurts me more than it hurts you. But it's your duty. I don't want to do my duty. Sure. Sir Arthur, suppose we both forgot our duty. Suppose we did. Kiss me. Kiss me like you did. On the beach. We could go back to Africa. We could play in the jungle. We could start life all over again. What's that? It may be my husband. Your husband? What shall I do? We've well, got to hide. Hide? Yes. We've got to go someplace. Let's go there. Uh, darling. Dear. Thank heaven I have you. Surely it's 
Not as bad as you want, Albie. What a fool I've been. Is everything wrong? Everything. I'm out on bail. Well, what are we going to do? I shall have to go back and face trial, of course. <laughs> You'll wait for me, darling, I know. A little flat on Third Avenue, I suppose. <laughs> What's that? Oh, it's just dead now. Edna. Come out of there. So it's you. Hello, Hamilton, old fellow. I've just been reading the most interesting book. It's called Nellie Clover or Fun in a Hay Mow. What are you doing in my house? I, uh, dropped in to borrow from your shelf. I guess he just came through the book. <laughs> He's probably read them all. I will have some of them insulted. Insulted? I intend to choke him. Oh! <gasps> When you're ready, I have a drink for you. Well, here I am. Dorothy, what, what are you doing here? Why didn't you tell me? Why, if I told you, you wouldn't have let me do it. I won't let you do it now. Go in and get dressed this minute. I won't. This is one time when I don't take your dictation, Mr. Hamilton. Wait till I get my hands on Brooks for this. I'm here, and here I stay. Have you gone out of your mind? Yes, that's just what I've done. I've watched you do silly, stupid things for years, and I've never said a word. I've kept my head, and I've been miserable. Oh, I think this is a terrible thing. But now I don't care. If someone has to be found here with you, it's going to be me. I'll never see you off tonight, anyway. You don't mean that. You don't... Go and then get your clothes on and get out of here before it's too late. You will, you've got to. Is that your husband, Mrs. Hamilton? That's him. Well, good night. Happy days. There's something about this that worries me. What is it? I just found it out. I don't know what to do about it. You have violent eyes, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you mean to say this makes Reggie a lord? Yep. Monaco and all. This is amazing. I thought you'd be interested. I am. Sandra, you were built for a title. Thanks. Oh, uh, I just dropped in to show that to Reggie. Oh, well, uh, I'll do that. Yes, I thought you would. Oh, but on second thought, hadn't you better hear those wedding bells first? I know my stuff, Ruth. <laughs> oh, say, speaking of wedding bells, I hear the more recent Mrs. Hamilton is about to ring out again. Nice, fast work.
told him to invite all the hungry chorus girls in town. I guess he did.
worried myself. Stay ready. Well, you're just in time for the finish, if you uh, get what I mean. Ring? Mm -hmm. 